let's look at a detailed outline for a research report or thesis. So this is a typical outline of an APA journal presenting original research, a research report that you might do in a research methods class, or your thesis if you're doing a thesis in psychology. So we start off in standard APA format, where we'll have a title page and we'll have an abstract. Now, if you're doing a research report for an outside organization, you might not want to call it an abstract. You might want to call it an executive summary. That sounds more uh, inviting than uh, an abstract, but that's what you, what it, it's the same thing. You're going to summarize everything, including the methods and the results. You're going to, you're not going to just give a, a, a an introduction to what people's appetite. You're going to explain what the results are in the abstract, because most people just read the abstract of articles, and if they want more details, they can read the rest of the article. So don't like, don't be afraid to say what your results are. You have to put your results in the uh, abstract. Then comes the first main section, the introduction, and you start off with a description of the problem and its importance. So that might be an illustration of the problem or just a description of the problem. It's a, this is where you present the problem a statement or the research question that you're trying to uh, deal with and, what, and convince you, the, the reader that's an important uh, uh, issue. And then you move into the review of previous research that's been done on the topics relevant to the, uh, uh, your research problems. So this is the lit review, the literature review. So you need to include the definition of all the variables that you're going to be studying. And besides the definitions, it's good to include um, information that we know about these uh, variables, the antecedents, and the consequences are how we usually describe them. So the antecedents are the things that, that cause this variable to be, and the consequent consequences are what this variable causes. So for each variable that you're examining, if you present the definition, and present the definition that you mean, because there's lots of different different definitions of each variable, but you want to use the definition that fits into your problem statement appropriately. You're going to give the definition, you're going to give the antecedents, and you're going to give the consequences for each of those variables. So if you have three variables, you would repeat that section three times, one for each variable, that pattern three times of definition, antecedents, and consequences. Then you can transition with the purpose of this present research including a theoretical framework used, some theory, if it exists, that will tie all of these ideas together, and you will conclude with one or more hypotheses, statements that if they are true, they will provide an answer, or at least a partial answer to the research question, or at least a partial solution to the research problem. And so you're going to you're going to basically be saying we have this problem we know this we know a b and c therefore we can believe that this is true and you present your hypothesis and then what you're going to do in the rest of the paper you're going to basically say well maybe you don't believe me that this hypothesis is true for those of you who are doubters we're going to go out and collect data and show that it's true so that's kind of the logic that you're going to Try to present all the evidence you can for your hypothesis through a literature review. And then in the sections following the introduction, you're going to uh, go out and collect data to find even more evidence for your hypothesis. Or you might find out that the hypothesis isn't supported and that uh, you weren't thinking clearly. Um, and that you'll discuss that in the discussion section. Okay, so that's the introduction. It's basically an argument leading up to your hypotheses. Then the next section is the method. And this is what you did to uh, collect data. And so you're going to give an introductory overview, and you'll talk about different, different things. You'll talk about the participants that participated in your study, the selection criteria, who could participate. And then you can present the demographics, of the uh, um, participants. So that's kind of like the results. It's like 
race, age, ethnicity, gender, describe who participated because we want to we want to know what type of people participated. Um, the procedures used to collect the data. How did you get these people? Was it a convenient sample? Was it random uh, selection? Was it all within a, a one country or one culture or one specific organization? You want to use the procedure used to collect the data. And then, and this is the long part, you're going to talk about the measures of each variable. So if you have a hypothesis with three uh, uh, involving three variables, you're going to describe, describe each construct or each variable. You'll give two or three sample items illustrating how each construct was measured and how a value for each construct, the variable, was computed from the data collected. So if you have three variables, you'll have three sections in the measure section. If you're measuring six variables, you'll have six uh, measures in the, uh, um, the measure section, sec six sections. So that's, that's really important. And that way, the, the person knows how you measured, how you operationalized the, the variable, the concept that you discussed in your literature review, and they would be able to operationalize things in the same way and reproduce your data. The next section is the results, and that's where the statistics are presented. And this is, the, this is usually the section that a lot of people skip over when they uh, read uh, journal articles. You start off with the descriptive statistics, and so at the minimum, you want to include the mean and the standard deviation for each variable. You might want to include the, the range, the minimum to the maximum, maybe the standard error. If the sample size varied, the number for the, each person. Um, so that would be the first part of the descriptive statistics. The second part would be the correlation table or the table of correlations, where you show how each of the six variables is related to the other six variables. So you might have uh, each row would be variable one, variable two, variable three, four, five, six. You number them. And then going, the columns are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six also. So if you want to see how variable three is correlated with variable four, you look at row three, column four, and you get that number there. And in that table of correlations, you mark the variables that are significant, usually with one star if it's P less than 0.05, two stars if it's stronger and it's P less than 0.01, and three stars if it's real strong, P less than 0.001. And so these, these, descriptive, uh, um, uh, these descriptive statistics are really important because it tells you about the the variables that you measure, and it shows how they're all related to each other. Then the next section is you test the, the specific uh, hypotheses. And that might be simply looking at the correlation table. If you hypothesize that two variables would be correlated, um, you would uh, use the results from the table. Now, the table of correlations, or the intercorrelation table, is always a two-tailed two uh, uh, significant. You always use P less than 0.05 two tails. Sometimes your hypotheses are one tailed, and so um, there's even more likelihood that they're significant uh, than uh, they, they might not be significant in the two tailed table, but in the if you made a one tailed hypothesis, they still might be uh, significant if they're in the right direction. And so you test the hypotheses and you go into details. Maybe this will be multiple regression. Maybe you're going to do a, a mediation analysis or a moderation analysis, uh, something like that. Maybe you have several hypotheses and you would uh, give at least a paragraph to each of the hypotheses that you uh, tested. Now, sometimes, even in a quantitative study like we've been studying, you might have some open-ended questions. This would be a good place to put, to discuss the qualitative or subjective results that you got from open-ended questions. Um, but only do that if it's relevant. Most studies wouldn't have open-ended questions, but sometimes students like putting open-ended questions there because maybe you weren't asking the right things and there's some really interesting things that people have to say. So this would be a good place to, uh, to put them. 
The next section is the discussion section. And that um, you would start off with a summary of the study, a summary of the results. So you summarize everything up to this point, but you don't use numbers. All the numbers stay in the results section. The discussion section is going to start off with a summary without any uh, numbers. So everybody can read it and understand it, even if they don't have a stats background. Then you talk about the meaning and the interpretation. And you're trying to be really convincing here. You're not just trying to say, oh yeah, we got these results and there's limitations to our studies. No, you're trying to, to if, it, if it has any meaning and if it has any relevance to anything in real life, you need to try to convince people that it does. And you're gonna discuss your results in light of past research and in light of the hypotheses, and then move on to the implications implications. What is the new information gained and what does this recommend? Now in our uh, organizational psychology program, we, we say, well, what does this mean for employees? What does it mean for supervisors? What does it mean for consultants? How can this be applied? How can this be used to make work better? And then finally, you can discuss the limitations of the study. Um, and often if it's a survey study, the main limitation is a correlational study. We can't uh, determine a, a causation, or maybe the sample that you used was uh, limited, not representative of uh, uh, a broader population, things like that. And so that's the end of the main part of the uh, uh, your, your paper, your research report, your thesis, and then you have a references section, and you only include the references that have been included in the main parts there. Um, you have the tables and the figures. Now, it used to be that the tables and figures had to go at the end of a paper in an APA formatted uh, paper. Now they don't. You can include them in the body of the text, and that makes it easier to read. And then we've got... Um, uh, uh, the appendices. And the appendices are optional, unless, of course, your advisor says you have to have appendices. So um, uh, what I think is really good to do is you want to have one appendix for each psychological construct, each variable that you have measured. And what you want to do is you want to include the name of the construct, a parenthetical reference indicating the origin of the items. Now, these first two you would have in your paper in your methods section. But here, instead of just giving two or three sample items that the respondent, uh, uh, that the participant responded to, you're going to put all the items in the scale that you used. And then you need to mark which ones were reverse scored. And this is especially important to have in your proposal when you go to analyze the data and you've got the list of all the variables measuring which variable and which ones are, are reverse scored. Um, then you can even include the prompt and the responses from which the participants chose. Um, but you don't have to repeat that for every item and stuff like that. You don't. Um, that, that, the, uh, the next appendix, however, it's good to include the entire survey that you used. So if you put it on Google Forms, you could take a screenshot and paste that into the Word document, each page into the Word document. Um, same thing with SurveyMonkey or Qualtrics. Um, put the the complete survey in, and you can also put the list of a, the letter of approval from the IRB. This is a good place to have it. Some places require that in the appendices. So your appendices might actually be longer than the rest of your paper. If the survey's eight pages long and you've got six variables, we're, we're at about fifteen pages there. Um, and that, that, that might be as long as, well, the, the rest of it would probably be longer than that. But if it, it, the appendices can get long pretty quickly. So this is an overview, a detailed outline of um, a typical APA journal, a research report, or your thesis.